Joining me now over Zoom is Clyde and Gracie from the band Lawrence. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Us. So like a lot of popular bands these days, Lawrence starts as a family affair. You guys are siblings, but it extends so much further beyond that because if I'm counting correctly, the band now features eight members. Is that right? That's yes. correct. <laughs> So what are rehearsals like? Does it feel like a Thanksgiving dinner, like everyone's just out of place and you got to move everyone to where they need to be? Is it hectic? I think that it was at one time, you know, when we were just getting started. But at this point, we are, you know, we like to think we're a pretty well-oiled machine. And, you know, all the other people in the band are like our best friends. So in that sense, it is kind of like a family dinner in that it's not we take ourselves seriously. And of course we're there to be professional, but these aren't like hired musicians that only come together for the gigs. These are our actual best friends from childhood and high school and college. So whether it's rehearsals or sound checks or the shows or the drives, um, it's always just like a really fun, big family energy. Yeah. That's awesome. And you turned that big family energy into a huge energetic anthem that's now making its rounds all across the country. That's Don't Lose Sight. Uh, can you tell me like the backstory of that song? What inspired it? Yeah, I mean, I that, that song in particular was because we were, um, I was having a bad day <laughs> and I, uh, I, I do a lot of acting stuff too. And I was kind of, hitting a wall in, in some of the acting stuff that I was doing. I found out that I didn't get a part that I really, really wanted. And that stuff is so um, par for the course. It's like, if you're going into any artistic field, expect, you know, a lot of failure and or setbacks. But for some reason, it kind of hit super hard that day. And we were going to do this uh, writing session in LA with uh, this amazing producer, Jorgen uh, Odegaard. And he and Clyde started playing this like really upbeat, these really upbeat chord changes. And I really wanted to write about the sort of like sadness that I was feeling, but it was really hard to write a sad song when, when clearly the direction that the song was going in that we were writing that day was something upbeat and poppy and fun and uplifting. So in that moment, it kind of shifted my perspective on how we were going to write the song. It could still be about the same topic, but instead of being a song about like failure and giving up, it's a song about choosing not to lose sight of your dreams and your goals. But what's kind of cool about it is that the verses still represent this sort of feeling of disappointment. So you kind of have both points of view in the song, of like wanting to give up, but then the chorus has come in and remind you not to. Right. So that makes me wonder then the second line of the song is I'm getting sick of the industry. Is that the music industry or is that yeah. your acting industry, Gracie? We, we wanted to keep it open-ended because I think that although the feeling started as some a really specific experience I was having on that specific day when once you start writing it and you start uh in a in a weird way getting into the specifics makes it more general so like and, and makes it more applicable to more people so when we were saying the industry in that moment yes were we talking about my specific gripe with the acting industry of that moment yes but I think it applies so much more to any industry, whether it's an artistic one or not, you know, our music videos about a guy in an office. So I was going to say in our video, you know, we were deciding, should we make it about a struggling musician or a struggling actor? And we decided that ultimately, like, this is a song for everyone. And, yeah. um, you know, we thought that it would just be fun because people already know that we're musicians. They know that they assume that we're going to be talking about the entertainment industry. So we just thought it would be fun to depict it in a more kind of um, corporate environment, just to show that, like, I think that everyone, whether it's in a work environment or any environment, can have these moments of needing to remind themselves to persevere. Right. So you guys don't have to take this chance, but I thought it might be fun to give it to you. Could you name one thing about the music industry that you would change today if you could? Wow. How long do you have? Yeah, just one? <laughs> That's a good point. That's a good point. Because as a failed musician myself, I have my own gripes. But uh, I don't know, Gracie, you got a quick one? Wow. 
um, the hummus that the venues provide, you know, facts. <laughs> the state hummus it very the very good this, actually but i would say that the 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 variability in hummus it's it the roller coaster of emotions you go on tasting hummus in green rooms this is an oft not discussed topic yeah. <laughs> um, well, don't tell no, you. I'll, I'll let clyde come in hot with a more uh with a realer one i do have some i do have some personal gripes with i guess one, one thing i'll say is like I'm someone as a singer who growing up and idolizing singers, I like going to see a singer who's actually singing. And um, I think that there's a lot more trickery beyond just lip syncing that goes on these days. Um, one of them being you go see someone performing and, and singing and the majority of, of pop acts are have live tuning on their vocals. And, um, and, and that's upsetting to me just as someone who likes to go to a concert and hear flaws. I like to hear people really singing and, and risking and to, to put it in acting terms, to risk and invest. And I feel that that's sometimes missing in live performance. Yeah, I agree. I also think that like artists are just sometimes put in positions where the incentive structures are such that like, they're not, they're not celebrated for thinking outside the box or trying to do things differently or carve their own path. Um, and, you know, I could give a thousand different little versions of that. Sorry, there's there's black ink on my hand because a pen, a pen just exploded in my hand before this. I don't want to... And that's because wow. of the industry, okay? Yeah. <laughs> I'm getting sick of the pen industry. Um, but yeah, I think, that, I think that like artists are not encouraged to think outside the box, to do things their own way, to take control of their destiny in a lot of regards, uh, both creatively and um, strategically. And I think that like, that's a lot of what I think about when I think about um, Don't Lose Sight and what it means to me. Yeah, yeah. Well, because for most artists, the goal is to get to a level where you can call your own shots and you can do things extremely outside the box and creatively. And only the biggest of the biggest really get to do that and if redefine. That, you know, like I think you hear all the time about really major artists, not to name any specifics, but I think we can all think of ideas of, of many major artists that have complained uh, about their lack of control, even at the highest levels, over what is being about how their music is used or not, you know, and where it lives. That is extremely true. So now I want to take us from that deep heavy in-depth inside baseball topic now let's talk about something fun let's just complete 180 this conversation the new album is called hotel tv y'all mm -hmm. watch anything good lately oh wow i'm trying to think what i watch on a hotel tv like i i feel like i've watched so much um i only watch family guy and south park it, when i'm in hotels like, actually, that's not totally true, but it is the main thing I watch in a hotel because I feel like it's always on a hotel TV, which is, which I love. Um, hmm, what have I watched? I mean, Succession, that season three Succession finale, no spoilers for the, for the audience, but that's really got me going. And I just watched the end of the end, just like that, the Sex and the City reboot. Oh, gosh. I, I would so say, um, I would say, season two of how to with john wilson mm -hmm. which is a relatively i don't know if obscure is necessarily how i'd call it but it's a very specific show that certainly any new yorkers watching or anyone that doesn't live in new york that wants kind of a bizarre peek into what a weird way to describe new york is i think how to with john wilson on hbo is like a beautifully bizarre show and i think in talking about hotel tv this isn't something that i've watched on hotel tv but there's a show called bojack horseman on netflix mm -hmm. that is just one of my favorite shows of all time and like for some reason feels very connected to our album to me in that it strikes this tone that has a lot of melancholy but also a lot of humor and silliness and i think that like you know, if you were to ask me my biggest influences musically, I would put BoJack Horseman weirdly in that list because of the tone it strikes and the way it makes me feel. 
And Seinfeld, probably. Seinfeld, too. Yeah, like it would be like the Beatles, Stevie Wonder, Seinfeld, Bojack. (laughs) I feel like I'm legally responsible if I don't ask this question now, but since you list Bojack Horseman as such a huge influence, you doing okay, man? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. I mean, it's it's such an incredible, it's such an incredible show. Okay, (laughs) okay. Because I haven't seen all of it, but you know, some of it that I've it gets, seen is it like it gets very, very it's dark. So good. Yeah. It's so it get it, that's what's so good about it though, is it's like it the tone of the show, and I think we talk about this a lot in music, is like being able to combine and traverse topics that feel mon- mundane or everyday mixed with the heaviest, most interesting, most life or death topics, that those are really harmoniously combined in it the same way that we have a song on the album called thoughts from the er and then on you know we've written songs that then there's another song called it's not all about you or a song called freckles like there's a lot of there's humor yeah, I, and, think like, and depth. I find bojack very uplifting in its ability to go back and forth so seamlessly between such darkness and such levity so in that way i don't feel depressed after watching it i almost feel kind of um inspired in a certain way but i can't say enough about how much i love that show well thank goodness you didn't say rick and morty otherwise with my input we'd be here all All right i have watched i am uh, yeah that that is another show that i love for all the amazing nerdy reasons that it is wonderful Mm -hmm. now i want to ask you both an individual question that's specifically tailored to you as an artist individually And I guess I'll start with you, Gracie, because everyone who's listened to Don't Lose Sight is completely blown away by some of the vocals in that song. How do you keep up with your voice? Like everyone says, oh, you're going to drink milk before you sing. But like how much of that is true? How much of that do you use? What's up? Most people say don't drink milk before you sing. And maybe I I had some really bad vocal coaches. (laughs) But uh, I, I don't know hot sauce and don't get any sleep. Uh, <laughs> you star. I, I don't I don't subscribe to any of that. Um, I, I definitely drink milk and eat cheese and do the whole dairy thing. Um, I and not that I know what I'm talking about, but I, I think what I do to keep up with my voice is um, I definitely do some warm ups before the show, but very minor and very chill. Um, I think I sing all the time in my life. So it's, I try to, I think the, the biggest thing that sometimes is, is difficult for me is that a lot of people advise like vocal rest as a thing to do, which I totally understand. I think it's so dependent on your specific voice and like mus- muscles, like what your literal musculature, I think determines so much of, of what you should do for yourself. I find it really hard to sing if I haven't sang in like weeks. So at the beginning of a tour to, to get into it um, is actually harder for me than if I've sang three times that day and, and the whole, you know, that entire week, I'll feel much better at singing because I feel like my voice is stretched comfortably. Um, but I am by no means a health expert. So contact your local, your local <laughs> doctor to uh, get some milk or no milk recommendations. Uh, that's just a lot for me. Fair enough. Thank you. Now, a personal question for Clyde. I've heard through the grapevine that you're a pretty big Settlers of Catan guy first. Is that true? Good research. I absolutely, I absolutely am. I'm obsessed. Okay. Okay. So my question for you is then, you got any tips to help me win at the next family game night? Wow. Absolutely. I've got a few. I would say uh, the classic one is no wheat equals defeat meaning I think wheat is ultimately the most important resource. It's actually uh, for singing as well. Right, right. No, <laughs> wheat. <laughs> sure. um, let's see. I think, uh, you know, you got to portray yourself as not being in the lead, even, even, uh, even when you are. You know, that that's very important is to play a good social game. You know, a lot of people say, oh, I want to jump out and get longest road. But then when you get longest road, you put a big target on your back right in the beginning of the game. No, you'd rather be the guy with four roads and wait till the very end to get your fifth road. You know, a lot of people, it shows a big part of human nature that people like to like, you know, show themselves as, 
you know, having a good situation going on. But in that game, it's actually better to seem like you're the lowly person that no one should be worrying about until you strike. That's probably not hard for you, Clyde. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I give off very meek. Uh, lovely, lovely boy. <laughs> profile. No, actually, no, I go around parading on press interviews and uh, that I'm a diehard settler. Now everyone I play thinks I'm uh, sort of going to be dominant from the beginning of the game. See, that is that is actually good advice, though, because every single time I play, I go for longest road first and try to collect a bunch of ore. So what you're saying is I'm an idiot. Yeah, got to keep got to keep a lower profile. Got to keep get some get yourself some D cards early in the game. You got to got to keep yourself protected. Mm, well, thank you for that sage, sage advice. Uh, one more for you, Clyde, actually, that is kind of an interesting part of your backstory, and that is that you've been getting song placements since you were five years old. You know, you have been a professional songwriter since before you probably even knew how to ride a bike. And that's... I barely know how to ride a bike now. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, listen, if Don't Lose Sight keeps popping off, you won't need to transport yourself anymore. You'll have limousines for that. So no. don't worry. Yeah. Um, being a songwriter your entire life, being at the center of huge productions and huge shows or movies or you know just even dropping multiple albums that people have consumed more than once it puts a lot of pressure on a guy do you ever feel like there's a moment where you're afraid that you're gonna run out of ideas after all these years it's a good question I mean I think writer's block is a really real thing I think that that's part of why I feel so uh so uh, grateful to have Gracie as like a creative partner or not only Gracie but some of the other very talented people in the band um, and you know uh, not only those folks but also John Bellion who we partnered up with to uh, work with on our music you know I think that um, I've always enjoyed collaborating in, in different ways and I think that I don't, I'm not concerned that I'm ever going to run out of ideas, but I'm definitely, you know, love the fact that if I'm going through a week or a month, even where I'm like, I haven't really written anything that I love that like Gracie might be in a moment of real um, kind of real ripeness for great new ideas. Um, so I th think that that's one of the really fun things about being in a band with so many people that you trust and support for good ideas. Um, but I don't know. I mean, I'm not sure if if I'll ever run dry of ideas, but I certainly have not yet up to this point. Good. I got my fingers crossed for you. Yeah. <laughs> All right. To wrap us up here, the record label made sure that I knew before we got on here that Don't Lose Sight has been placed in that Microsoft commercial, which right. just aired in the NFC championship game. So First things first, congratulations. Thank you. Next thing's next, who's going to win the Super Bowl? I'm embarrassed um, to say that I'm, is it the Rams and the Bengals? Is that who's in it? Okay. Correct, yes. Um, I haven't done a ton of following of uh, football this year, but I guess I'll go Rams. I don't know, LA. Well, I, I used to be a big football fan, and I'm. it's still new to me that the Rams are even back in LA. So I guess I'm going to say, the Rams because the first Super Bowl I ever watched was the St. Louis Rams against the New England Patriots back wow. in the Kurt Warner days. So, <laughs> for old times. I'll go Bengals not to be just just because I think it's fun to be contrarian. Also, I love the Bengals, although I'm more of a Go-Go's fan myself. Um, <laughs> more, I don't really, uh, you know, I don't to say I don't have a horse in this race would be an understatement, mm -hmm. but I love the spirit of competition and uh, go football. Well said, extremely well said. Thank you for that. You have well, see, my main horse in the race got blown out by the Buffalo Bills. It was disgusting. Right. So, and my second horse in the race didn't make the playoffs. Right. So I really. <sighs> I just hope Eminem does well. How about that right. at the halftime yeah. show? Yeah. yeah, that's what I'm rooting for. That'll be really cool, actually. Yeah, that will be. Fun. That will be. Well, it was really cool getting to know you guys as well. And I can't wait to see just how far Don't Lose Sight goes. I know we're early 
you know, there's a lot that's still out there on the road. You could even say the longest road, Clyde. But, uh, you know, well, until a low profile and uh, straight <laughs> where no one's expecting. See, that's that's exactly it, though, because Lawrence is not a name that people know off the top of their head just yet. But the way that things are going, looks like you're going to enter that conversation soon. So I'm glad to get in before it was too late and you're too famous for me. Thank you, guys. No, thank you for having us. Appreciate it. Totally. All right. Take care, guys. Thank Thank you. you.